Hi, I'm Mike Brookfield here. Um, welcome to a new series of videos. I've been thinking hard about what content to put up um, and what kind of lessons would be beneficial to the community out there. And one thing that I thought would uh, really stand the test of time and be useful for people in years to come, if, if you're discovering this in five or 10 years time, is really just knowing the notes on the guitar, uh, relating it to uh, things that you can identify with like blues guitar and rock guitar and um, just improving your knowledge of just fundamentals and based around music theory. So, you know, there's, a, there's always the argument that you don't really need to um, learn notation and, uh, and that's kind of fair enough if you kind of want to go that way. But I, I noticed just through my teaching that most musicians at some point want to know. And um, who could blame them? Because the more you know, the more options you can provide for yourself. But I'm not going to sell you notation. I think you have to come around to it at your own time, you know. But, you know, the main, the main benefits are you can analyse what you're doing. You can analyse what other people are doing. You can communicate with other musicians much more easy. It boosts your confidence. You can become an expert on your instrument and on music and your chosen style. So that's the sell over on, on notation. Some people are ready for it, some people are not, but I'm, I'm gonna go for it with this series and hopefully um, you get a lot out of it. Now what the, the key is though is kind of relating it to stuff that is, is kind of fun. Um, and I'll tell you a quick story about kind of uh, myself. When I was uh, doing A-level music 20 odd years ago, yeah, a lot more twenty five odd years ago plus. Um, I uh, every day we had to uh, do these bark chorales, and uh, I couldn't identify with it at all. I could just about read music, I had just about very basic kind of uh, knowledge of notation. Uh, my guitar playing was was fine, and I, you know, I was kind of cooking and rocking and playing with different bands and stuff, but I just couldn't really identify with the bark thing. I didn't have that. Um, culture uh, to fall back on or that deep knowledge so I it, nothing really stuck with me as much as I love Bach and as much as I love the music I just couldn't really identify it it was only later on when I started studying jazz and applying the knowledge to blues that I really started to see the benefits of, of notation so uh, in this first lesson um, I'd like to do the note of C um, now it might seem really simplistic just to do one note at a time per lesson but you'll notice in about three or four lessons time it will have built up into something really really kind of tricky <laughs> and, and difficult so if you bear with me on this what this first lesson where we're just going to do one note but you'll, you'll be surprised in a couple of minutes time that you've got quite a lot of work to do if you want to keep on top of these lessons so let's get stuck in will we on the screen now you can see um, the note of C. You can see it's in the, the second space from the top. Now these lessons are kind of de designed for people who know just a little bit about notation. Um, you don't need to know anything but you know if you know a little bit of background already you'll, you'll probably uh, get on with it a little bit kind of faster. But that note there, the second space from the top is the note of C. Now on the guitar, which is what we're concerned about, you can play that note here. Now we have to remember the guitar is a transposing instrument. The guitar sounds an octave lower than what's written. So if you played that note on the piano, it would sound an octave higher. So bear that in mind. So there's that note of C. Now what I want you to memorize is all the different places you can play that C on the guitar. So second space from the top C, you can play here on the second string first fret, 3rd string 5th fret, 4th string 10th fret, 5th string 15th fret, 6th string 20th fret. <laughs> I always have to think about those last, last three frets. I'm going to be doing this applying it to um, a 22 fret guitar which is what this is. So if yours ends at the dot you have a 21 fret guitar. If you've got an extra fret after the dot you've got a 22 fret guitar. 
So your first mission is just to memorize those notes. You've got C, 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 and they are all located on the second space from the top. Now what other C's have we got available to us? We've got another C which is two extra ledger lines above the stave. And we can play that here, 1st string, 8th fret. We can also play it 2nd string, 13th fret. So I want you to memorize that. We can also play it on the 3rd uh, string, 17th, and the 4th string, 22. So we have these options. When you're dealing with the C, that is two extra ledger lines above the stave. And then the final one is uh, what's called middle C. You'll see it's one extra ledger line below the stave. And that's located here on the fifth string, third fret. And can also be played on the sixth string, eighth fret. So memorize that. One extra ledger line below the stave is located here and here. And they're the only two places you can play that. So now you've learnt all your C's on the guitar. You've got um, the C which is on the second space from the top on the stave. You've got the C which is two extra ledger lines above the stave. And you've got middle C, which is one extra ledger line below the stave. So that's your memorization. That's what you have to do for week one. Because we've only got one note, we can't really uh, do that much more with it. But what we could do is start looking at the caged positions and working on our octaves. So you can see here that we have the C on the second space from the top and our middle C. We play those together and we get the, uh, the C form which is related to the cage system. If we play middle C and the C second, stave, second space from the top here, we get the A form position. If we play middle C C second space from the top and then the C which is two extra ledger lines above the stave we get the G form if we play middle C here C second space from the top C two extra ledger lines above here we get the E form if we play C second space from the top C, two extra ledger lines above the stave, we get the D form. So now we've mapped out our cage system with the notes of C. In the key of C. So what have we got to do so far? Memorize all our notes of C. We've got, it can be noted notated three ways, second space from the top, two extra ledger lines above, one extra ledger line below, and then work on your octaves to memorize the cage system and the octave shapes with your C's. C form, A form, G form, E form, D form. So what else can you do to add to that? Maybe we've still only got one note, and that's what lesson one's all about. Why don't we use practice some vibrato? Because that's something we can kind of relate to. So practicing vibrato. How about playing sixteenth notes on each note? and working on our alternate picking. So taking each C,
very simple exercise. We've just played all the C's available to us on the electric guitar and we've been practicing alternate picking. So using vibrato, alternate picking. The very last exercise I want you to do is to relate it to something which is cool. BB King. Let's try a little BB King lick. So in rockabilly, we, we do this kind of thing, uh, octave displacement a lot, where we play the same note and we slide up to it. You hear it on all the old kind of cool rock and roll, Cliff Gallop kind of style playing uh, records. And BB uh, King likes to do a similar thing. He goes, and if you listen to Sweet Little Angel on Live at the Regal, he does it a few times. And if you study with me, you're probably going to come across that, you know? So what we're doing there is we're actually playing one note that isn't C, we've got a G just going into the C. And then we're playing the C on the second string. So that's a really effective way of opening a solo or just including something that's relatable to learning the notes. And you'll hear Joe Bonamassa do that. You'll hear a lot of all the modern great blues guitar players play that lick. So there you have it, lesson one. We're looking at notation. We've learned all our C's. We've applied some techniques to it. So we've got something that we kind of relate to in the music that we like to play using vibrato and alternate picking. And we've managed even to kind of pull a little bit of BB King in there. So that's just with one note. Uh, you'll notice as these lessons go by, it gets uh, exponentially harder. So. Um, you know, good luck with it and give me a little bit of feedback. I really hope you enjoy it. And I think it's something that um, most guitar players can, can really benefit uh, by if they embrace the idea of using notation. Okay, keep it happening. I'll speak to you soon. Thank mm -hmm. you.